Yeah, I'm not. I'm not the judge on. All right, this right, right, right. It seems to be a running gag at this point. Oops. Greetings, fellow armchair imagineers. Somebody's getting fired over technical difficulties. Tiki here. And Blue Dragon 5. And Jacob Wild, too. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as we find ourselves on the cusp of Disney's big venture into the world of streaming, even courting a war in the process, we thought we'd... It, we thought it'd be nice to stay up to date on the ever-growing catalog and rule on what's a must or a bust on Disney+. Plus. And tonight, we are talking about Monsters at Work, The Vending Machine. All right, so yeah, guys, sorry we're a little late. We had some technical difficulties. Uh, Claude, you are here in our thoughts, and you should hopefully also be here in the comments. Um... But uh, guys, uh, just to give a little bit of an update, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get up on my soapbox on a positive soapbox for soapbox for a change, <laughs> where uh, I feel like you know, like a couple years into Disney Plus, I really feel like we're coming into our own of like this service is legitimately delivering solid stuff on a regular basis. And I am very happy with it. Like we're to the point where I am just like I'm turning on the streaming service. And I'm just like, oh, look, like, I didn't even know Short Circuit Season 2 was out. Like, you know, like, we got the big stuff we're covering. We got the Marvel stuff, the Star Wars stuff, and then Monsters at Work is a little bit mid-tier. I think Monsters at Work should be getting a little bit more attention than it is, but that's a different story. Uh, but my point is that I feel like the days of, like, okay, guys, we, we got to talk about the new Goldblum episode, get some content, you know? I feel like that's uh, it's refreshingly over, guys. I uh, I want to emphasize just how positive I am. I you know I'm not positive on certain elements of what Disney as a company is doing right now. Hint hint nudge nudge six thousand dollars Star Wars LARP. Hint hint nudge nudge. Wow. But um, for Disney Plus, I will say as a consumer, I am pleased. <laughs> Um, Chip and Dale, I, uh, you know, there's not enough of that to really do a recap of it yet, but I am very happy with what I've seen so far. I'm really liking the style. Uh, just all over the board, I, I'm really pleased with uh, Disney Plus right now. I'm, uh, I think we've, uh, I think we're at a point where the uh, service is at the best it's ever been. All right, but still, six thousand dollars for not even two days disney all right anyway what, what are you even talking about it's like about the hotel. Star wars hotel dragon oh okay it's like not even a two-day experience and it's six thousand dollars well that's how they pay for those, those streaming <laughs> shows <laughs> but anyways there's the correlation well we overcharge them for the hotels but it goes into the and you get the three work. full hours in galaxy's edge <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anywho, uh, well, okay, somebody. Yeah, so, uh, I, I want to. Uh, I want to. I do want to catch up on the last episode too, because uh, of course I I was out for the last one. Yeah. And guys, I gotta say, man, I really picked a bad one to miss because the yeah. last one was legitimately my favorite so far. Mm. Um, I I really really liked it a lot. I I thought we got a really good deep dive into Duncan's psyche. Um, Duncan is. Maybe not my favorite character, but he's definitely up there. Like I'm, I I, I feel vindicated that I've latched onto him, and I, I feel like yes, yes, it's paying off. He's not just a one dimensional jerk. Uh so I really, really liked last episode, and also, uh, I don't know, I just I, I I thought the uh the the knock knock joke thing just killed me at the end. I thought I that told was, you, I told you it was great. <laughs> that was easily the best uh, Mike's comedy class yet. <laughs> Um, now this episode, gotta admit, it's, it, it's okay, you know, with the stakes as high as they were, I kind of thought the jokes were a little repetitive, um, I, I'm not, like, honestly, I, I don't know, I, I feel like there should have been a little bit more, a little bit more cross DNA between this episode and the last episode, I kind of feel like, uh, you know, like, Overall, we got uh, we got some decent uh, some decent cross section where you know like the uh, the events that happened last episode I guess probably contribute to the budget cuts I'm guessing 
But I don't know. I, I feel like Duncan, his character, kind of like reverted backwards in a way. This episode was kind of a backward slide for Duncan. Outside of the quirk of him calling his mother, I love the running quirk of him calling his mother. Well, I in this so case, he writes his mother. Yes. <laughs> well, yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, with that in mind, uh, also, I just want to put out an observation for this show just in general where I feel like this show, in spite of having a stupidly short, like, gap in time, where it's, like, it's not even technically a sequel to Monsters, Inc. at all, it's kind of, like, a weird, like, okay, we're gonna do, like, the weird, like, in-between time period between the second-to-last scene and the last scene, essentially. <laughs> um, I, I really feel like this is kind of what I was wanting from Incredibles 2, as far as, like, a generational gap in the storytelling is concerned. Because think about it. Uh, Monsters, Inc., you know, we all kind of saw Monsters, Inc. as kids. It's, you know, the, the kid is very much a big focal point of that movie with Boo. And then Monsters University, you know, we're, we're all kind of college age at that point, just graduating high school. And I feel like Monsters at Work, like, I feel like it's very much a show that kids can enjoy for sure. But I feel like it's made for the people who grew up with Monsters, Inc. and are now experiencing the existential hellscape that is the workforce. <laughs> what do you guys think about that? Because I, I was kind of getting that vibe. I was like, you know what? Like, this is this is kind of proving me wrong with it. Like, I, I'm still disappointed with Incredibles 2 overall. But it's kind of proving me wrong of, like, you don't necessarily need to do a time jump. What you need to do is kind of... Uh, <laughs> you know, shift your thematics a little bit. And I feel like the focus of Monsters at Work with the, uh, you know, with the workplace uh, comedy and observations, it's, I, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but it's almost too relatable to the point where it's, like, it's a little bit anxiety-inducing how relatable it is. All right, I'm uh, I'm down off of my soapbox. Uh, before you guys go on, we have some comments here. Um, let's see, Claude says he loved the episode. Um, the budget cut storyline was funny. Uh, Claude, I will say I love the Mike and Sully stuff this episode. That was definitely the saving grace of the episode, for sure. Um, and then uh, L.E.P. says, I, too, take my Monsters, Inc. spinoff show character development very seriously. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, Jacob, what do you think? Yeah, I thought this episode was, I mean, was solid. I mean, I wouldn't say it's like up there with the empathy, thing, but I did like the. It's kind of like sort of like um, kind of like a bonding exercise between the, in the members of the MIF team, through the through this high tech through this new vending machine and everything. I thought that was always pretty interesting. Plus, plus as you said, as you mentioned that the dynamic between Mike and Sully is always a highlight. <laughs> like especially like, where'd you get all this money? <laughs> It's just found under your bed. <laughs> uh. Okay, the the uh, I think we got the John Goodman equivalent to "I'm going in" this episode. Oh yes, it's, we uh, did. Yeah, we did. Oh, do you want to tell him about it? Sure, sure. So, what what does it say to you, Sully? That we're broke. Yes, yes. Oh God, I'm so glad you picked up on that, right? <laughs> yes, I told the exact same way. That we're broke. Racist. That <laughs> I, that, that's very much the John Goodman. I'm going in. It is. It is. It's just. <laughs> oh, that's great. All right. Uh, Dragon, what do you think of the episode overall? Yeah, so, you know, we get some uh, office vending uh, machine comedy this episode that we do. Uh, that was a good episode, but uh, does make me. A little concerned about um, about a few things, a couple things, and this I want. To, this is not a bad episode. Those things don't really kill the episode for me. It's just I'm I'm seeing a pattern form between this and the fifth episode, and it's kind of making me a little a little worried. We might we might kind of fall into kind of a regressive pattern that, like again, with the backsliding of Duncan, for example, mm -hmm, something like mm -hmm. that, where it's like, hey. Like episode five, we had some pretty interesting stakes here, and we didn't we didn't take the plunge like we would have done in like a Monsters University. And to your earlier point, Tiki, speaking of Monsters University, 
I really do like that way of looking at it. That again, with the generational aspect of uh, you know, the Monsters Inc. franchise, that again, you're you know you're the kid, you're the college student to uh, you know twenty years uh, down the line, you're you're the workforce. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of, I think it's purely uh, I think it's purely coincidental, but it's really a lovely way it worked out in that regard, though. <laughs> really nice. <laughs> sure, sure. But uh, but yeah, I mean, this episode I, again, it's good, but it's no for me so far. The the big the last big tier I really had was uh, the Big Wazowskis. That was like you know I love the first two episodes, and then the Big Wazowskis happens, and that was uh, oh my god, that's that's still like right now. It's that's my high point. Uh, nothing against five, but uh, just uh, I don't know. Six six was just it was it was solid. I think the only out of the, so out of the six so far, three was the only down downward one for me. Yeah yeah. yeah. Um, I agree that three was the only one I had legit issues with. This one was just like I said, I was kind of dis. I don't know, first. I, I guess the reason why five was the one that stuck out the most to me was just because I honestly found Duncan to just be super duper relatable with his with his anxiety and his you know like his dreams being crushed. And Dragon, tell me I haven't pulled that exact same pity party bullshit on you. No, you have. Yeah, I know. I know. Hey, well, just, I will say this though: you know, Duncan <laughs> like, did have a moment like, oh, of genuine. I see myself in this too much. <laughs> Duncan had the the most attached I've ever been to the Duncan character was a moment rewatching Five, where he uh, just has that reaction to banishment. We're just like, oh my gosh, his whole world's crumbling around him. This petty little multiple eyeball bat thing. Yeah, you know, he's yeah. just he's like he's like the whole banishment like oh yeah i guess By the that's way, i freaking i freaking love the design of all the little helmets on the individual eyes yeah of course even just with fritz is like just looking at the image here, <laughs> like the, the morning version the, the, the black spray painted version uh -huh. of the monster's hat with you know like the eye cut out and, for and their and, and their flowers are being held in coffee pots <laughs> nice it's nice all right um so let's see. Uh, speaking of which, uh, what do you guys think of the uh, t t uh, the the, ro the rose gag? <laughs> oh yes, the rose gag with the smile, right? The whole <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it's oh, pretty God. funny and then scary beyond all belief, but funny. Indeed, indeed. Uh, I, I just Rose is just like such. She's just such a delight every single freaking time she pops up on screen. Yep. Like if it was just Roz, it'd still be a delight. But like the fact that it's just like the fact that we have this like extra layer of like meta weird humor of like is like like is it right like it's ex she's exactly the same as Roz, but she's not i don't know i just oh by the way i had a real totally tickles my funny bone i'm I sorry had a, go ahead. i had a no-brainer realization about uh rose okay is that we absolutely need Rose because we can't go back to the status quo with Roz because now she's the the head honcho of the of the, of the cda yeah, yeah, totally. Because totally. now, now the, the cat's completely out of the bag. We cannot. We, we, can't, <laughs> we can't just work at Monsters Inc. now with the whole, you know, with the with the changeover and everything. The whole, like, you know, the laugh power of it all. Some people have also directly said they put her in there just to spite Mike. <laughs> I mean, let's face it. This show wouldn't be the same without a at least a Roz equivalent. Yeah. Like Roz is an essential part of the Monsters Inc. formula. I think as, she really as, is. As Leb says, we love. Roz's crazy Roz's sister. Roz's crazy sister. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, we, should, we should we should be mourn, shouldn't we? <laughs> Sully, Mike, did you hear? Tomorrow was Pay Me Back Tuesday. That was that was just you know Mike just giving away his money from yeah the okay so let's bed. talk about the uh, I I know we need to talk about the vending machine stuff <laughs> but. Honestly, I, I really was like, I think the vending machine stuff is kind of what brings this episode down a little bit, if I'm being totally honest with you. But uh, I, I really am in love with the uh, with the Mike stuff. I, I really thought the work morale stuff was like, it was some great Mike and Sully banter. Of course, we got Mike's new car. 
<laughs> oh yeah. Well, we had that last episode. Oh yeah. So. I'm sorry, guys. I, I watched oh. episodes five and six like kind of like in a row. So I t- <laughs> yeah, that was a smart plan. There, big guy. I yeah. know, right? <laughs> they, they wanted. They want, he wanted us to bribe you with this car. You know what's oh, funny uh, though? Uh, just I, because it was kind of there, I did rewatch Mike's new car recently after that episode in between <laughs> in between weeks because I was just really like, my God, Mike's new car holds up so well. It, does. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. It's so great. Anyway, Definitely one of the better of the uh, of the spinoff shorts. Yeah, it's great. I miss my car. Maybe I can trade it in. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sorry, uh, we're talking about the wrong one. But yeah, so the um, but yeah, the Mike and Sully thing. Of course, you know me. I'm really aching, and we really got the most of it last episode. Just a little tease at it. I love seeing. I think the long spanning arc of this season. Hopefully, will end up being Sully. Sully's going to take a more active role in charge. Like he's going to earn that tie at the end of Monsters Inc. You know, so to speak. Like you know, he's you know he's going to turn things around on the scream to laugh energy. And uh, right now, Mike's been calling all the shots. I mean, Sully, when the chips were down, when you had the efficiency, you know, when you had like you know the uh, the inspector come by, he had to uh, you know he he, had, he stepped up in very professional manners, uh, trying to keep Mike in check. Like Mike, put that away right now. Like, okay. Yeah, by the way, that supervisor character freaking cracked me up. Yep, the great John Michael Higgins. That's Varric, man. Yeah. <laughs> it very much reminded me of, like, the, the health inspector from Spongebob or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the creepy eyeballs. Oh, the eyeballs were wonderful. I kind of got, like, a minority report vibe from that. It's a creepy, plucky little eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyways... But uh, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. My my hope is that Sully's going to step up more by the end of things. Uh, but uh, you know, just kind of seeing you know, like the I just love like the business side of our characters kind of growing and kind of growing into these roles that they're very ill suited for. Where, you know, uh, Mike Mike's trying to boost morale, and also we bring back a guy from the pilot. We bring back Crummy Ham. <laughs> yep, yep. Mr. Crummy Ham, and also we have an accountant who's named Bean, which I think is hilarious for Bean Counters. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's a very Muppets joke. I know that Muppets has a character named Bean, but still, that feels like a very Muppets the, joke. The thing is, Mike actually does do a good job boosting morale. He does. He, <laughs> he ends does, up doing so because he's giving out you know, f- you know free money Mondays. The art, the art gag really cracks me up. It's just the the base of the minimalist kind of style really speaks to him. And like, yeah, like, <laughs> the Sully painting looks really good because it looks like a bunch of doors on. Man, top I would of hang wood. up the Sully painting on my wall, dude. I would. I just love the fact it looks like doors. The the, the spots yeah, look yeah. like doors, which is, is so indicative of Monsters Inc. Which is uh-huh, just a, totally, such a great totally. idea. And my very friend, much kind of calls to style like. Like it calls to mind the style of the opening credits and that kind of stuff. Yeah, and also it's the, it's the it's kind of the concept art they worked with. They have to start right, right. right and they can add to it from there. And Mike's like, I don't get this one. <laughs> Which is funny. Also, again, all the all the art gags too. Like you had uh, got uh, 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 God, it was like the Michael Ange. I remember what the name goes uh, Michelangelo or something. I know it was Mike. I know it's the artist, but it was uh, God. Right. I got nothing. <laughs> Well, oh, thank, thank you for your support on that. Thing. Anyway, you're welcome. <laughs> hey, oh, so Mike, uh, Michael Fangolo, thats what it was. Michael Fangolo and Andy Gorehol. Like those are some of the art gags, what? right? <laughs> Andy Gorehol. It's like a monsterized version of soup. All right. Yeah. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, Leb asks, "What do you guys think of the main?" of the bagpipe cover of the main theme is haggis so that i love that one we had a monster that was like a living version of bagpipes named haggis yes, that's yes. really funny but yeah i love that each of these endings in addition to like a little audio gag at the end of them was uh you know we have like a different it's almost like what family ba- family back when it was good used to do you know when they had the different or- orchestrations of the music at the end which i think is really clever each episode has a different orchestration if i recall at least after two yeah, I really like it. Uh, I, 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 I uh, it definitely, uh, definitely sticks out. Definitely unique for sure. <laughs> All right, um, uh, let's see. So let's talk about the uh, the Vendi machine. Vendi. Vendi. Everyone knows it's Vendi. Oh god. <laughs> oh, god. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, uh, so we've emphasized the importance of drooler coolers in this work environment. So it makes sense that we get, we dedicate an episode to the the uh, procurer of uh, the producer of said drooler coolers, which is Vendi, the trusty vending machine member of the Mifter team. Mm-hmm. It really ties the room together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, much like that plant in the corner. Yes. So, uh, so Tyler accidentally kills Vendi. 
it was a, it was an accidental homicide. You know, he's got these big these big horns, and we've established from the beginning he's not really cut out for the mifter work, but he's there anyway. Well, I mean, he has the he has somewhat as the facilities for him. He's got these really inconvenient giant horns that make that job tricky for him. It's like, you rest the, <laughs> the nut, I rest a nut. <laughs> yeah, not not the nut, the nut. He simply go he went made that nut go flying, but yeah. I do love like the charm though. Again, Val Val's coming into her own though. Val has been developing nicely. She is, she is. Bit yeah. by bit here. Like the whole like, you know, bump, 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 uh, way to beat, and big bump. And <laughs> <laughs> would you call it not not murder, but like machine slaughter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah, so uh, of course Fritz, he's devastated, he mourns. He doesn't hold these and blame Tyler. But Edward he, Winkler he, does have a pretty damn good vocal performance this episode. He does. He does. It's like Winkler brings it so hard with such authenticity when it comes to just the the, the retirement realization in this episode. My God, does he does he and already they have like the funny mourning to the genuine mourning to just that. Seriously, I'm I'm marveling at Winkler uh, later on when he likened himself to the to the now deceased vending machines. I'm old, broken, and I had to go. <laughs> it's like that was seriously. This is a beautiful, legitimate moment for that character. I loved it. And of course, Duncan yeah, and it was a really good resolution to the storyline too. Yeah. <sighs> well, because like you didn't want to see him. Like I, I, I legitimately felt. His position where it's like you did not want to see him pick any one of those characters. Like, I feel like at this point in the show, let's give him credit. Like, uh, like we're we are pretty attached to each one of these characters pretty individually at this point. Now, Tiki, that as great as that is, and I do love that so much about this episode. This does bring about the concern I have from last episode. And this okay. is where I'm, I'm fearing it might be a trend that if this keeps going, it might be just a repetitive thing that could maybe hurt the show in the long run. Where it's like last episode, we had a big opportunity for change and the very least consequence. Like again, kind of the Monsters University. Like I totally we're, see where we're you're going. going yeah, we're going from the mail room. Where I mean, I'm not saying we couldn't put Fritz back there eventually, keep him around in some way, shape. <laughs> Perform, but it's like that was such an excellent kind of uh, resolution. And again, like Fritz, kind of his whole thing is the Duncan story's been about his retirement and everything. And I mean, he's been there for a while, he's been the constant. I mean, imagine how devastated he'd be like, yeah, uh, Fritz is going to go to save all the mifters, which is going to put pressure on Tyler and everything. Which, uh, for like, oh man, you're, you're going to leave him too. It would have been a good status quo change. I agree. I agree. And that's what I'm saying. We had an opportunity like that last episode. With I'm not saying we wouldn't have undone it last episode if Duncan and Duncan so and basically Tyler. what you're saying is we're getting pretty episodic with like, oh no, there's a threat of people getting fired. But I'm oops, saying if they do it in the, the next. Minute. If it happens again in the next episode, I'm going to be really worried. <laughs> well, the next episode. Yeah. Can we transition there? Or do yeah. we have anything else to say? Well, I mean, uh, I was gonna, we, got, we got to talk about Vendy 2. Yeah, okay, yeah, Vendy 2. All, all I can say about Vendy 2 is that I want one in Tomorrowland. I. I Using Vendy 2, the, the modern Vendy mm -hmm. machine, which essentially is what you have now with like the movie. Like, it's so weird, just given how things but, have been. But what I'm these. saying about the I want one in Tomorrowland is like I want a Vendy machine that's like all original Disney snacks. Oh, that's a good idea. I, I yeah. Want, I want a Vendy 2 in my living room. <laughs> one of Bendy two that puts out like the Mickey Mouse shaped, yeah, you know, like ice cream bars and and like the the popsicles. That'd be amazing. That's what I'm saying, man. That's the dream. I mean, I I don't know. I think there might be vending machines like that already. I mean, not a digital one though. It's monster shaped. I mean, no, you're I mean, right. It's not I mean, not I mean, a digital one. That's monster shaped. I'm, fair point. Fair I mean, point. I mean, yeah. And I mean, it is kind of similar to like those, not the, the more like fountain vent fountain machines. That yeah. Are, I mean, not exactly like a vending machine, but more like fountains where you can just like customize your drinks and everything. Yeah, that's, a, that's what I'm saying. Like, the only time I've ever seen these things have been at the movies back. Well, I mean, I did have gone to movies recently where you have like the touch screen now when you get at the, the fountain, at the fountain drink area. But the best thing, the best part about these things uh, for me is that you get to really customize the drinks. Yeah. So you can throw in a little hint of vanilla, a little cinnamon if you want. So, See, to me, you know. I'm, I'm a simple guy. To me, that's sacrilege. Like, what are you doing? You're defiling the sanctity of the coke. Oh, I, uh, I, I disagree, sir. I disagree. I'm all for experimentation. <laughs> anyway. Hey, can we, and we can just learn them. We actually know the true moral of this episode. Don't remove the doohickeys. Never remove oh, God. the doohickeys. Because <laughs> you, you, know, you call, it's, it's never going to work again. You don't tamper with the smart machine. That's a good PSA, folks. You never, If it's a smart machine, you never tamper with it. 
Never. All right, and uh, Ellie yeah. Beat makes the point. Yeah, I want to know what the droolers taste like. My point exactly. Let's get let's get one in the Disney parks. Come on now. That'd be good. And again, Duncan, here's the thing. So Duncan, um, he was real. And this is what the, uh, speaking to the step back with Duncan. So Duncan really um, was at fault in breaking Vendy too. I mean, only quickly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at fault here for very petty reasons. Here's what bugs me about the episode. And again, it's not a thing that kills the episode. Just when I'm looking at like Duncan, where we actually gave him a little bit of growth last episode. It's like, hey. Uh, you yeah, know, last episode like, I was legitimately thinking like, okay, like uh, we're gonna get to a point where it's like they might be like, you know, they might still be a little bit cantankerous towards each other, but it's not like it's not gonna be this one sided like super duper bitter rivalry anymore. Yeah, where we have this whole like, uh, hey, hot snots are my thing. Like that's the most petty thing I've ever oh, heard. I, that that bugged me. That was easily the worst part of the episode. But on the on the bright side, he got sucked into the machine and tortured a little bit. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, he's fine, but yeah, I'm just saying it must have been really terrifying and sucked into a vending machine with like that. I love that how he did it too. Like he unplugged it, very simple solution. Like, okay, well, we're done here. It's a roll credits, but the back backup battery. battery. Yeah, the backup battery got sucked in. It was, it was scary. <laughs> right, and also, I, um, I was almost expecting it to go on a rampage at some point. <laughs> I almost, oh. not entirely though. Tyler had a nice had a nice arc though, and they patched something up. Which and of course we we very much we I we did it identically. And this is this is I don't know how necessarily I feel about this, but I think it was nice though. Anyway, a slice of the fact that we mirrored the the booze door scene from Monsters Inc. Considering that we're this is the bridge to getting to that booze door uh -huh, scene, uh -huh. where it's like okay, close your eyes, okay, now open them. You know, the reveal of the of the vending machine. Oh, the sultry sound of my voice. <laughs> yep. All but that line, but yeah. Yeah. They should have included that in there that I wish they would have. Yeah. Yeah, I got I'm I'm sorry, Dave. One last thing that we got to talk about the comedy class and then we'll then we'll uh, transition. Um sure. Yeah, the um had, did you guys think the vending machine was maybe a little too modern just given how kind of analog the world of Monsters Inc. is? Uh, you know, it's funny you mention that because, like, that's always bothered me in regards to Monsters, Inc. being in Tomorrowland to begin with. But with something like this, I was like, hey, look, it's something in the Monsters, Inc. universe that kind of fits the Tomorrowland aesthetic hmm. a little more. Well, I, mean, I mean, consider and consider they can extract energy from kids' la kids' laughter and screams. I mean, a high-tech vending machine really isn't too far out there. <laughs> that's fair. All right, and then the comedy class... We got clowns, which, of course, in the world of comedy, is a double-edged sword. <laughs> as, as, as the big guy demonstrates. Yes, and we kind of reuse that character model from the uh, from the baseball game. And Mike really, he's really set on the knock-knock jokes, man. Yep. He's, I mean, after after last episode, he's determined <laughs> to make the knock knock jokes work for this class because he was like carried out of a stretcher and everything. It's Yuma! <laughs> I, said, I swear that's like every like every time like parents turn to, turn a joke from their kids into a lecture. It's like it was just a joke. Don't make me lie to kids. <laughs> but, but, All right. like, but but the good guy's like, "All right, now that smile." <laughs> <laughs> right, well, that was this episode. I wonder what next episode's going to be like, though. Well, I feel like uh, for the first time in this series, I legitimately feel like this is necessary. Uh, so, spoilers, people. Um, I, I, I'm basically doing this just in case Monkey watches this, because I know Monkey is spoiler-sensitive. <laughs> But uh, next episode, we're getting a big character from the Monsters, Inc. universe back. And uh, not only that, but it's someone that we've talked about recently. So big spoilers. Stop watching if you don't want to know. If you want to go into next week's episode completely clean. Dragon, would you like to tell them? I don't know, Tiki. You don't know, really? No, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't look into it. I don't, last, I don't know. Uh, next episode is all about the Abominable Snowman. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Yeah, I'm honestly super stoked. Yeah, um, yeah even here, and he's been he's he's been slated to show up. I had no idea when. I didn't what know I'm dedicate. especially excited for the episode premise basically revolves around him, kind of like you know coming back to work after being banished. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it means we're going to get a lot of Ratzenberger. Yeah, we're going to have to address. I mean, I I'm hoping we're going to get something like Mike and Sally like, welcome him back to the workforce and everything. Because think of remember. 
he was in the mail room in Monsters University. Uh -huh. He was, he was uh -huh. in charge of the mail room. Again, the Cliff Clavin of it all, he yep. was in charge of the mail yep. room. Yep. <laughs> so, 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 again, it'll be really I, nice. For I, I, like, honestly, the fact that we're getting John Ratzenberger in a meaty role in a, P in a Pixar project, like, I am... I, I'm honestly about as excited as I can be about this show, yeah, except for like you know, like except if they did like a ten year time jump, like hey, we're gonna see Boo as a teenager now. You can know, you imagine how crazy that is. Like, <laughs> that's what if, I'm saying. Like outside of some sort of crazy revelation like that, this is about as excited I'm, as I'm gonna get. I'm gonna bet show. you if we do a season two of this, that's gonna be their big. That's gonna be their big hook for people to come back. Like okay, no, the now guys. Return of Boo, we're after the movie at this point. Uh -huh. so anything, uh -huh. I mean, basically, after the movie means anything again, we're actually in legit, legit sequel territory that people have been waiting for for 20 years. So this is like, yeah, it's going to happen. <laughs> I'm wondering if you'll, if, uh, I wonder if Abominable will have any trouble adjusting to the laugh power. I mean, well, so long as there's snow cones, I think it'll be fine. Like, I mean, he seems like an agreeable, like, an agreeable snowman. Uh, he honestly seems like one of the monsters that would do the best at the laugh stuff. I mean, I mean, yeah, they'll, they'll bring the kids snow cones. I mean, that's and that's what I'm saying. It's like, like why can't they call me the adorable snowman or, or the agreeable snowman? Yeah. I mean, like, I think he'd actually transition quite well into that. Yeah. In the episode description, he's just listed as the adorable snowman. <laughs> And the, <laughs> the, I just checked the name of the episode. He's even adorable returns. Hey. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Nice. All right, so I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, I think we've, I think that's all she wrote, right? Uh, I think Claudia earlier said, "I love Cutter's reaction when Duncan yeah, yeah. was getting attacked by Vendy." Too. Yeah, Cutter had between this episode, and last episode, some great things like the yeah, Cutter and the easily like. I mean, she might not be the most deep character, but like she's easily the funniest character, like without yeah. question. <laughs> I, I mean, maybe besides Mike, just because it's Billy Crystal. Come on, but <laughs> I mean, Billy Crystal just has like a kind of a naturally funny sounding voice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. I'm mean, going in, and I, mean that, and, I, and I mean that in the best possible way. <laughs> Oh, God. All right. So I think that's about it, guys. Uh, big thanks to Ellie B and Claude Gringa for joining us in the comments. Uh, Claude, sorry we couldn't have you on board this time. We'll hopefully get your. Get your tech issues fixed so you can come back on with us live sometime soon. And, uh, yeah, that's all she wrote. Uh, Suicide Squad spoiler cast coming up. Movie memoirs coming up. So uh, a couple big things coming up this weekend, guys. A uh, pretty big weekend for us. And, uh, all right, with that, that'll do it for us this week as we holster our remotes till the next installment calls for the draw. Mano y mano. Just plus. And us. That we're bro.